Hey, what's up? We have a new chapter of One Piece. Uh, oh, oh, interesting. So, uh, the, the crime family of... I can't think of this guy's name. It's the Fire Tiny Pirates. Compone Beige has been looking for Lola's sister. It looks like they've landed in Dress Rosa. That's that's what my guess was at the end of the last chapter. Uh, and they run into some tough looking guys here that have taken out a bunch of other people and they knew uh, Shifon's sister. I said earlier Lola's sister, but they have Shifon, that's Lola's sister. Looking, They're looking for Lola. Uh, so they must know Lola way back from when she was with the Thriller Bark Survivors Club. She was president of that. And then she, of course, got her shadow back and set out into the wild blue yonder, as every good pirate should. So this is like their first clue. Um, I guess they probably won't be staying on Dressrosa for long, if this is even Dressrosa. And instead we'll be uh, setting off after whatever this guy's latest memory of Lola's location is. Should be fun. This chapter is called Big News? <laughs> Dude, Big News? <laughs> okay, hold on. Uh, there's been some of the most exciting One Piece chapters have been ones that are just mostly big news. Seeing what's moving and shaking throughout the entire world of the series, foreshadowing future arcs and causing huge revelations about past ones, introducing hype new characters and seeing where they stack up with you and another, this is the function of the news in the world of One Piece. And yet, despite all, all of those chapters, there, there's been a few that I think have referenced the newspaper, but they certainly have never been called Big News. 956, Big News. Okay, so we had an act break in Wano, which makes me think that we could just go somewhere else entirely. We could return to the Reverie. We could go anywhere. We could see anything. This chapter is... I'm, I'm, I'm so excited. I, I hope you guys are excited. Okay, going on to the next page. And we're back in the Ryugu Palace on Fishman Island. Congratulations on finishing the trip. So, okay, so... I thought we would have maybe a flashback to what happened right after we left the Reverie. I really hope we get that depicted at some point at least. What the revolutionaries did how it played out against the marine station there, so on and so forth, all of the royals involved. I hope we still get at that at some point, but that that clearly isn't going to happen right now because the reverie is over. The the fishman royalty are back home. Garp bring, bring, brought them back. Get another really lovely shot of the Ryugu Palace, one of the most beautiful depictions Oda has ever come up with. Oh, and Garp escorting them home. Stay long enough for tea. But given the circumstances, not any longer than that. Every always seems to result in chaos. So clearly something big happened. And maybe Garp has just sort of escorted these people away out of fear that they're going to get swept up in even more calamity. But they're all smiling. They're all okay. So whatever happened either kind of like aligned with what they were hoping for, you know, because Neptune, of course, has his own reservations about the world government, or it just wasn't that big in the moment, and it's one of the implications. Okay, okay, let's, let's just find it. With 50 heads of state together in one place. Do you think they're going to get along? Some them has internal trouble on their plate. Greater powers silently stare each other down while urging their smaller allies into fights using resources and tools as leverage. Ooh, and this is very nicely depicted. As these two kings kind of sneakily supply bats to the two that are fighting in the middle. And all of these characters are so intriguing. The guy on the far left here... Hmm, did Oda cross a line? Did Oda draw this guy with a Hitler mustache? And it looks like kind of an old Imperial Prussian uh, military garb meaning that this is definitely, like, Germany-coded, and he has the, the mustache. I don't know. Uh, all of these depictions, of course, you probably could take offense to, but they're just so lively, such bursting with creative energy, albeit stereotypical energy. It's hard to fault Oda for this. 
you can tell that he's just having fun, and and who knows what consequence of any 90% of these characters will have. Differences in wealth and religion. Religion? I suppose the, the celestial dragon worship is somewhat of a religion. That those people are just above the law and above everything else. There's also Kuma's Bible, which has never once even attempted things to be explained. There is like the nun that ran the lamb's house that turned out to be corrupt. But what was she like actually the nun of? It's like other cultures that have kind of ritualistic things. I don't know, just evoking this word religion here seems quite interesting. Of course, there's like the Skypean religion too, but that was more of just like a cult, a cult of power. <sighs> when it comes time to join hands, they smile and grind each other's boots under the table. How many kings can actually speak equally for both their own people and others? A round table indeed. So all of this seems normal? Like, is this the chaos? What about the revolutionaries? The discussion was fraught with tension. Yeah, like, that's not what you would be saying if, like, a gigantic terrorist army blew up a gigantic part of Marineford, which I thought was definitely, or not Marineford, sorry, Marijoa, which I definitely thought was possible. But I guess that didn't happen. Roots grow deep in the history between countries. We're just another part of that. As long as no blood is spilled, I'm willing to call it peace. But this meeting was a bad one. Okay, so what, 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 what actually happened? It's a bit late in coming, but there's one thing that happened that I haven't told you about yet. Following the close of the reverie, something happened just after we left. I got the report while on the ship. The Navy is using its free full resources to solve the matter. But for now, I beg of you, don't be fearful of the surface and of human beings. The incident is regarding the Kingdom of Alabasta. Okay, so... This goes back to something we saw right at the end of our time during the Reverie, where that mysterious person, L or something, Eld, I can't think of her name, or if we really even know her name, or if we even know that it's a her. That was just a prediction that people made because she sat on the throne that is supposed to have no king, that quite literally. Anyways. They were asking her, who should be erased from history? Whose flame should we extinguish? And by they, I mean, of course, the Gorosei, the, the five elder stars, the de facto uh, obstinate leaders of the world government. You know, people that can very easily rub out whoever you ask for. And it seemed like she had been deciding between a few people. She had considered, like, Luffy. She had the Luffy wanted poster. She had the Blackbeard wanted poster. I think she had Shirohoshi's poster, but then she was holding Vivi's poster. Well, not her poster, not Shirohoshi's poster, but pictures of them. And, and walked up to the throne with Vivi's poster. Okay, okay, okay. So, v Vivi, I think, is in trouble. Stands one week after the conclusion of the reverie. Oh, Pangea Castle. What a godly name for a castle. The roar of the conference still hanging in the air. The head of nations depart, travel back to their homes. The American guy, the Russian guy. Earlier in time, however, at the World Economic Journal, thing after another, how many, so many events happening at once. <laughs> okay, okay. The World Economic Journal, by the way, looks like it's headquartered in a gigantic teapot. It's just fantastic. I just wanted to point that out. I love it. And a fatality. Big obit sell papers. That's a fact. Of course, it's our boy Morgans, the big squawk and troublemaker who is on uh, Big Cake Island. Uh, Whole Cake Island, I'm sorry. Big Cake Island. I like that, though. The revolts. This also fantabulous too. An attempt to murder. Thrilling stuff. The lay fires and bring them all. Two covers, front and back. Sure. Sounds awesome. Telegram from the government. Gander on the digits on this check. They want me to cover a story, but which one? That's it. Oh, cover up a story. Seven story this big? Never. So, <laughs> this guy, I was going to talk about this. This guy that shows up with the letter from the government, 
is is like one of the funniest characters in One Piece, because uh, a, a long, long time ago in the SBS, Odo was asked how it is that the the government gets the pictures for the wanted posters. Like, isn't that dangerous? These are all like super high level pirates or whatever. Uh, they're not gonna just stand there and have their picture taken in most cases. And I know it is like, oh, there's this guy. I can't remember what, what his name is, but he has some very silly, obviously made up on the spot name. Uh, and he's like, oh, he's just really fast. And he'll just sneak in there and, and then run off. And he drew him. He drew what the guy looks like. And now this guy actually shows up sometimes. Isn't that amazing? Don't you just love One Piece? But here, it's not that guy. It's it's Virgo. Virgo deep, deep undercover. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now they're threatening the paper into covering up this story. Whatever it is. We don't know what it is. We don't know what it is. It's Cypherpool. Wait, that's Cypherpool? I thought this was Virgo. It, doesn't it look like Virgo? But Virgo, I, we kind of thought was dead. So I guess Virgo is dead. This isn't Virgo. It's just someone from one of the Cypherpools. But it's not someone from CP0 or CP9, presumably. Because Morgan beats the crap out of him. <laughs> Don't mess with big news, Morgans, if you know what's good for you. I'm the king of news. Be a monkey hungry Scrooge, but first and foremost, I'm a journalist. As the DJ of the printed page, I get people's hearts dancing, and I'm the one who decides what news is fit to print. God damn. We're moving off his wall, and it, the, the whole bunch of Morgan's birds, because he, he controls all the nukes. Coos. The news coos are the, the trained seagulls that deliver the newspaper. So they have this whole army of birds they can use to relocate. Oh my god, I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. Oh man, Morgan's, what an interesting guy. What's up with him? I thought he was just like, first kind of like a fun gag to explain. Like, oh, the head of the newspaper, which is delivered by seagulls, is this gigantic bird. Like, that's hilarious. And then he started playing more and more of a role, but it was kind of like a very limited, like, like the, the fitting into a plot line of the story. Like, oh, he's the one that reported on this. He's the one that ran the article on Luffy because he was there firsthand, blah, blah, blah. But now he's like actually <laughs> interfering with the plot, you know? Mmm, mmm. A sort of ascension of character from what seemed like just a minor gag into someone who might actually have a major impact on the story. So cool. So one pc You know? Okay, and then they get a message from King Wapple. <laughs> it's got some in leaked intel. Intel? Intel? Intel. Whatever. Including the incident the government sought to hush up, the news of the king's vote and resulting incidents spread instantly throughout the world to the shock of many. The Kamabaka Kingdom, the Revolutionary HQ, relocated from Baltigo after that location was leaked. Can't be true, you're kidding, Sabo. The World Economic Journal, that bird's lying through his beak. Okay, so. What happened? It looks like Sabo is reported to have done something well outside the Revolutionary Army's expectations or even desires. Okay? He did something heinous, it looks like here. Something that they're they're extremely opposed to. But that's what's being reported in the paper. But then also Sabo must have actually tried to do something, which is like the incident the government sought to hush up. Maybe. So Dragon and Ivanka being shocked. That's like one thing. Because they weren't there during the reverie, as far as we know. So it could be like things got out of hand and they're just learning about it now. But then Betty, who was there, also seems shocked, also seems confused. <sighs> okay. So please don't be too. Koala also freaking out. Lost contact with all of them. How do we prove any of this? All of them. So Koala wasn't there either. It's only Betty that I thought was there. That is Betty in the bottom left, right? The Revolutionary Army Commander that has like the cheer up fruit. <sighs> okay, the Goa Kingdom. 
Steli, of course, recognizes Sabo, the legitimate heir to the bloodline. He was... Wait, how did it work? No, they really were brothers, yeah. And then Sabo just left, and then Steli tried to make them think that Sabo was dead. Hmm. What does it say that Sabo did? Something with Vivi. I think these two things are connected. Sabo killed Vivi. He was framed. But then Vivi is dead? I would be so shocked if they just killed Vivi off like that. Sabo abducted Vivi. Vivi. That's, that's plausible. Sabo abducted Vivi. Only just found out he's alive. These are, of course, the mountain bandits that raised that rambunctious trio, fated to change the world. Yes. The world never gets old, does it? Things are just getting good now. Ooh. I, I love this, that they keep showing Go Flamingo reading the newspaper. Because remember when he was captured? He was like, fine, throw me in prison, as long as you bring me the paper. <laughs> I, I, I won't be... Uh, I'm not going to be bored for a day. Alright. And then we see the pirate island full of lead. What a, what a, and it's got like a huge skull and stuff. Full of lead. What a name. What a name. And a lawless island occupied by pirates. Of course, including here. Blackbeard. Blackbeard bags onto the ship. If the Navy's only going to take it, I might as well claim the prize. What the heck does he mean by this? Stretch of open sea. Hmm. Okay, so this is Kobe communicating in secret with someone. Can't keep up with it all. Even this, all the sailors in the world. Your situation goes. The world of Terry won't be acting on it just as we planned. We don't have the manpower. And then in Wayno. Land of Wayno isn't a member of the world government after all, it's for the best time. Maybe he's hoping the pirates will knock each other out. Ooh, so I think this is X Drake. This is my guess. Because this looks kind of like his outfit, I think. He wore those big tight boots. Uh, I'm surprised that we're going back to Wayno during this kind of uh, intermission type arc. But this is something that I had been wondering about. Like, what does the government think of all of the events on Wayno? Are they going to be involved? What, what do they think is the correct response here? And it makes sense that their response at this time is just nothing. Because all, all of this stuff is happening. See, this is what they keep emphasizing, is that, like, lots of things are happening. It's not just this VD thing, and it's not just this Sabo thing, which might even be the same thing. There was, like, a big vote on something... We're not entirely sure what, but it could have some pretty major implications. And then on top of that, probably three or four just other things happening. Okay, anyways. You know how Kaido and Big Mom were at each other's throats the other day? So this is why I think it's X-Drake. Also, he has a cape. It's like he knows this sort of stuff. He was an ex-Marine, so it kind of makes sense that he would be interested in keeping up with the marines and like keeping them informed and stuff he, he still has some sympathies in that direction maybe and of course he would be privy to all of these developments with kaido and big mom now they're teaming up yeah it's like straight top secret special fortress captain of sword okay so he's actually still in the navy that's so cool they're part of sword which i guess is some super secret special branch of the the marines as for Straw Hat Luffy, the situation's stagnant. No news of a breakout. No more forbidding bit of nose. news. News. Capital the other day, I saw CP0. Oh, what? I mean, wait a minute. Don't like the implications. <sighs> okay, okay. So. This is before. This is after Luffy liberated the Udon labor camp, but before they exited en masse. That was back when they were kind of keeping it undercover and just running the camp themselves and training. Okay, okay. Meanwhile, the government is coming to pirate-led Wayno to conduct deals of some kind. My mind went blank for minutes after I saw it. 
I'm on my way to the Island of Women to capture the pirate Empress Boa Hancock. <gasps> oh, shit! Oh, the Shichibukai is over? Damn, they just let Buggy in and then they cancel it? <laughs> Buggy ruined it for them? <laughs> the Shichibukai is over! People are celebrating. It was wrong to have worked with pirates in the first place. Should have done this a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. The left eyes are going bye bye, stupid pirate emperors. Hawkeye's clown. <laughs> Just clown. <laughs> sure about this, that's one of the great, three great powers of the world. Oh, yeah, Shichai Bukai, RIP. No more Shichai Bukai. Wow, wow, end of an era. End of an era. So, what was the final roster? Still Kuma, I think. Kept his membership. Hawkeyes, of course. An OG from the start to the finish. Doflamingo's out. Moria, I think, was stripped of it. Um, the Pirate Empress, of course. She was another in it the whole time. Buggy now. Uh, that fake son of Whitebeard, was he a member? Weeble? Maybe he was a member? Who else? Who else? Law? Law was one of the Shichai Bukai now. And he still would have been, right? Or he, did he relinquish it when he decided to go against Do Flamingo? I think he relinquished it as soon as Smoker saw him. Because he wasn't supposed to be doing what he was doing. The whole Do Flamingo. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't when he went against Do Flamingo. It was the fact that he had been set up on Punk Hazard at all. Matthew's relinquishing it. Okay. Yeah. The dissolution of the Seven Warlord system. Ah, <sighs> they're all going to get arrested soon. So that is like the real major thing that's going to happen. That's why Kobe was like, we don't have the manpower. It's because they they know where all these pirates are. <laughs> they, they know everything about their setup and their schemes and their bases of operation and stuff. Or at least they should. So they're like, all right, well, they're illegal now. So I guess we're just going to go round them up. <laughs> An impassioned argument from the two kings whose nations had suffered because of the Seven Warlords. The matter was put to a majority vote and passed. So that was the big vote. Okay, all right. I love it. I love it. I love this intersection of, like, this this major plot element <clears throat> that's been the focus, or members of it have been the focus of several arcs, and, like, the system behind this plot element, i.e. that the government turns a blind eye to what they're doing, has been, like the reason why they've been able to be such major factors in these arcs, you know what I'm saying? So it already had this sort of political component to it. And then the fact that it has this huge twist to it through the political arena as like a, a, a representation of the political power of the reverie, I think is just, it's just masterfully done. Uh, the implications it has, you know, Hawkeye is a, a wanted lawless man now or something, like what the heck could that mean? We're gonna look. We're getting buggy action already. I think this this looks like Buggy's big top, his circus setup way out here on Empty Bluffs Island. <laughs> empty Bluffs Island. Oh no, they're coming to us, Buggy. All of your privileges as the Seven Warlords have been automatically revoked. You no longer have any ties to the world government. This means you're nothing but a pirate again, Buggy. This guy we've seen a few times before. This uh, I think he's like a vice admiral with the big mustache. Usually he's hanging out with that other vice admiral that's like blonde and wearing sunglasses, right? I think. Anyways. Great big bull puppy. <laughs> she suddenly claimed me one of them. So you're done with it and you want to arrest me. No honor in the whole lot of you. Former warlord. He's a former warlord already. All close surrounded. <laughs> Crocodile and Doflamingo get up the shenanigans under your noses and you're gonna take it out on the rest of us. My life's plans are ruined. <laughs> Fight like hell, that's what we're gonna do. Go up there and show them what we're made of. In the meantime, I'm gonna skedaddle. Alright. I love it. I love it. Perfect. A perfect reintroduction to, to Buggy. What a fascinating character. Following him through all these ups and downs is just phenomenal. The god of pirates. Ooh! So of course they go to Hawkeye's 
residents. The thrill of excitement. It's been so long since I was the one being chased. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like <laughs> this is a dumb idea on their part. Like, it, <sighs> well, what is Mahog doing? He doesn't have a crew. He's got one tiny boat that he just sometimes sails around in. He'll show up sometimes and help you out. But he wasn't really doing much piracy, really. He just had beef with people. He'd just go after pirates he didn't like and take them out, you know? This, to me, it's unclear what laws he's even broken. Mihawk. <laughs> um, look at the sound effect around him. The dawn. It's so exquisite. Okay. The former warlord. Yeah, this seems real dumb. Don't they know that all of their, their battleships are going to get carved up? Don't you know that all he has to do without even getting off his island is like, whoosh, and they're all in pieces? Meanwhile, all right, here's uh, here's Weevil, who I correctly thought was a warlord. So we've seen one, two, three now. Okay, and then we know they're going after uh, Hancock, too. So I, I don't even remember who's left. Like, it's been quite a while since they had a full roster of seven, I think. And, of course, Weevil, being a dumbass, has no idea what's going on. Seems like they're not on our side anymore. It's their mistake. Get them all, Weevil. In the name of White Beard. <laughs> mm, Amazon Lily getting raided. So the seven worlds have been stripped away. He ships out at sea. Don't panic, you seem to have forgotten something. The reason they chose us to be the seven warlords is for our strength. Ooh, ooh, so badass. Okay, so the way this is set up, I'm going to be a little disappointed if this is the last we see of these fights. Um, I guess these are all the warlords right now. Um, so I think the next few chapters might be just showing who gets away, who fights to the end, who gets captured who just obliterates all the ships that were sent to capture them. Um, I think it'll be that kind of very indulgent plotline, which is going to be a lot of fun. And then, what else, though? Like, what happened with Sabo? What's going on with that? We never found out. I think he's been framed for the kidnapping of Vivi, when really what happened is... So, the, the revolutionaries were, like, about to attack, Sabo was undercover, everybody else was in the crawl space that the one revolutionary guy could, could build up. They are about to do a big surprise attack. And then it seems like that hadn't happened. Like, that wasn't covered in any of this news. Nobody's freaking out about the revolutionaries. So, that was, like, cancelled? But then Sabo, acting independently... Like, maybe they canceled it after the Shikshai Bukai announcement because they knew there was going to be this major shift in government priorities because of that. And then they were like, okay, let's replan. Like, there's, there's better opportunities to come. But Sabo was like, no, we're here now. I want to do something. So he starts, like, making his own plan. He probably has all of these crazy ideas because he's well learned on all of this revolutionary history and, and anti-world government history. So there's probably all sorts of stuff he's looking for at Mary Joa, Mary Joa, or however you pronounce that, including the really friggin' crazy giant straw hat, which, of course, will take another 300 chapters to explain, I'm sure. Um, so he sets off to do something, and then the real shadowy part of the world government kidnaps both Vivi and him and releases the story that Sabo kidnapped Vivi. This is my guess. All the other revolutionaries have left. We can't make heads or tails of this news coming out. Yeah, I don't know. All right. Really freaking crazy chapter. Big news indeed. My favorite part was Morgan's beating the crap out of that guy. How dare he impersonate their ace photographer. All right, I hope for more chapters like this. And then from there, we return to Wayno hitting its climax. Oh, oh, what a good time to be a One Piece fan. All right, I'll see you next week.